everybody, welcome to the Bow Fishing Buzz, presented by AMS Bow Fishing. Dish Mitty, how's it going? This music, oh, I can just see full throttle across the water. Oh yeah. Sun is setting. Don't don't tease me. Don't tease oh, me with that. Oh man. Look out the window right now. Yeah. And what is it doing right now? It's snowing. Blizzard. It's snowing. It's snowing here in Central Wisconsin yep. at the AMS shop. Actually, you're calling for like four to eight inches of snow. Oh, great. great. Through today and tonight and tomorrow morning. Not to mention, like this morning in the truck, it was like negative 15. That's true. It's a little chilly out there. Yeah, it's hard to throw, uh, shoot your arrow through uh, a foot of frozen H2O yeah. here in central yeah, Wisconsin right exactly. now. <laughs> yep, yep. That's why I like doing the old bow fishing buzz because it keeps me jacked up for, for sure. the season opener. I know. I know I like to listen to podcasts for hunting and fishing when it's not even hunting or fishing season. It just kind of keeps you in the loop, keeps you thinking about it a little bit. Absolutely. So last week we had our first podcast. I, I had a blast recording it. Had a great time. It, yeah. We had a lot of cool comments. So mm-hmm. I was excited to see that, you know. For sure. Uh, we, had, we actually had one guy email us. He says, oh, I listened to the podcast. It was really cool. He said, I'm just wondering, how did each of you guys get started in the sport of bull fishing? Oh, that's a cool question. As far as when we started bull fishing in general. Yeah. When we, you know, started working for AMS. All kinds of stuff like that. That's so a great question. I think that is totally something that we could focus this this podcast sure, around. Sure, sure. That sounds like a plan. Sure. Sure. You, know, you want to start us off? Let's see here. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a carp by the tail. You go first. Me? Yeah, you All go right. first. All right. <laughs> well, this one goes. This goes way back. Way I, back. You're 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 <laughs> like twenty years old. Twenty one. Twenty oh twenty one. Twenty one. Twenty one. <laughs> well, this is way back in middle school. I actually started right away in like preschool when I was just a a little tyke. I actually in the same grade as myself was the owner, Jeff and Cindy's son, Sawyer. Yep, Sawyer. Mm-hmm. Yep. We were great friends all through middle school, and in, like, fourth grade, I was fourth or fifth grade, he invited me over one weekend, and we were having fun at his house, and, you know, I knew Jeff and Cindy. I knew that they owned AMS, and I sure. always thought that AM, bow fishing is so cool, but I never really thought of doing it. I never had the gear or, or anything to go do it. Right. And one night, Jeff and Cindy said, well, how about, how about we take you out on the boat? We just went right on the old plane over here. Sure. Yep. You know, and a couple miles away. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And we went out there, and I was just, I was awestruck from the get-go. <laughs> you know, the lights on the boat, putting the boat in the water, the bows. It was just absolutely crazy. And that, I had so much fun. And you know what the thing about it is? I did not even shoot a fish. Yes. I shot at, yeah, like, shot at I shot at 15 or 20 fish. I did not shoot a single <laughs> fish. That was just, that was just crazy. And I know that I spent the night at their house and all night I could not sleep I'm like oh my gosh that was so much fun and then the next day Sawyer's like oh what do, what do you guys want to do and I was like well I, I don't know about you but I think we should go bow fishing <laughs> again bullfishing that again, was yeah. fun <laughs> so then I we went out that day and I shot my first fish cool there's a picture very cool circling around oh, here yeah. somewhere I'm just a little fella holding up a fish that's half the size that I am I think we have that picture here on one yeah. of the drives here on the computers yep yep <laughs> so that that was like my first you know that was when I first was exposed to the sport Sure. And then I, uh, in high school, you know, I played played sports and whatnot and didn't have a ton of time for jobs outside of, of school and sports. But my junior year, I think I picked up a job at Fleet Farm in sporting goods. Sure. Yep. So I was yep. actually always stocking a bunch of AMS product. Oh, cool, yeah. And I would always think, I remember seeing you on packaging. I'm not even kidding. I'd always see you on packaging. <laughs> I always thought, gosh. You know, it's right in my hometown, Stratford. Like we said before, mm-hmm. 1,300 people. Yeah. Just a tiny little town. Yep, yep. You know, I, I'm best friends with the owner's son. I always just thought, gosh, that would be an awesome place to work. So, you know, a month or two went past, and I eventually built up enough courage. I actually wrote Cindy a letter, mm-hmm. the owner, Cindy, a mm-hmm. letter. And I said, hey, if you guys need any summer help or anything, do not hesitate to give me a call. Sure. You know, I said, I would love to work for you guys. She got back to me like the next day. Oh, cool. She said, well, I'll tell you what, we need help right now. And I I uh, got, I contacted her. It was like June, May. So it was kind of busy season yep, for yep. bow fishing. Right. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. So I had to put my two-week notice in at Fleet Farm. So there was a two-week span where I would work from 
here at AMS from six to three and Fleet from four to nine. <laughs> that was just oh my god. And then Fleet on the weekend. So that was that wasn't that wasn't very fun. But, but you were getting your foot in the door. I, exactly, yeah. I was. And uh, I you know I started working summertime at you know here at AMS and. Right from the get-go, they said, you know what, we're real busy in the summertime, but, you know, once things slow down and your schooling starts back up again, you know, we might not, you know, maybe let you go and then pick you back up again in the summer. Sure. And, you know, I was just, I was out on the line doing stuff and putting tips together, and I thought it was the best job on yeah. the face of the earth. I remember seeing you come walking through the, yeah. the old shop years yep. ago. I, uh, okay, this is not a joke. <laughs> My first week working here, you were gone on a trip somewhere. And when you the first day you got back <laughs> and you walked into the lunchroom, I remember you, I was sitting there in the lunchroom and you walked in. And I was like, oh, my God, there he is. Oh, my. You're a wing nut. <laughs> that's him. That's who everyone. That's who, that's who I've been staring at at the Fleet Farm packaging for yeah, all these months. Enough of that. You're I a thought, wing nut. oh, my gosh. And then, of course, you sit down and you tell one of your crazy <laughs> stories. And that just added to the, I, I could barely even talk to you. For like the first month I worked there, I was so intimidated. You were such a icon. You're a wing nut. <laughs> and <laughs> so, anyway, I was working there in the summertime and. Uh, and this is between your junior and, and senior, senior year in high school. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And uh, it just got to be school started up again. And, you know, I, I think I went in and I talked to Jeff and Cindy, and they said, well, if you want to come after school mm-hmm. from like three to five, and then I actually worked something out with school. Your senior year now. Yep. My senior yep. year where I would actually work my eighth hour of school, I would come here and work. As sure. A, as a youth apprenticeship program. Yep. So that was pretty cool. So I stayed on there. And then basketball started, so that got tough, but mm-hmm. they still found time for me to work, you know, and I loved doing it, so whenever I could hop over here from school, I right. wanted to. Right. And uh, really, it's just been, you know, I, I've, I was part-time when I was in college, but otherwise, I've been here since that sure. day, and I was, that was what, I think four years ago yeah. now. And I remember your senior year, basketball was your big sport. Yep. You were a big basketball junkie. Yep. I came to a few of your games in high school and mm-hmm. stuff, and I watched you play. And I remember the ATA show, of course, oh, was during basketball that's season. Right. Yep, yep. And like I said, basketball—that was your, your, your main yep. sport. My, you my loved basketball. Sport the, yeah, yep. And uh, during your senior year of basketball, you were asked to go to the ATA show. I was. I, I just about <laughs> pooped my pants when I was asked to go to the ATA show. I knew of the ATA. I knew what it entailed and everything, but. I think, I don't know if you were in there or not. Jeff called me into his office and he sat me down. And of course, I thought I was in trouble. I'm like, <laughs> oh no, what did I do now? He says, well, how would you like to uh, go to the ATA show that was in Louisville that year? Okay, yep. Louisville, yep. Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I think he thought I was unable to, sp- I was speechless for like 10 <laughs> seconds. I just kind of like, I just like shook my head and made strange noises. And he, I remember he was laughing about that. But yeah, I had to miss. A basketball game my senior year. It was an important game too, wasn't it? Was it was against. It was against. I'm trying to think. Oh, it was against Edgar and. Yeah. You know, people don't know, but Edgar is Stratford's biggest rival. Yeah, we're, we're like 15 miles apart from each other. It's we're like huge rivals. Yeah, it's like Packers Bears. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a big time rivalry, and I miss that game. And uh, I remember coach. Coach wasn't too excited about it, but <laughs> once I explained to him, you know, what the opportunity was, and I was doing it for work and everything, right. he, you know, he cooled off a little oh, that's bit. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So that was that was one crazy experience. But uh, I know, I think it was that same senior year, maybe the summer of my senior year, you know, I'd gone out on the boat with you. Yep. You know, bow fishing, filming, mm-hmm. having fun. Yep. And uh, me and a buddy of mine, Kyle, actually decided, you know what? I want to... Let's get our own boat. Sure. Let's go halves on yep. a boat. And that's how it always happens. That's so part we of the can, addiction. Right. We can go out whenever the heck we want. <laughs> yep. You know, and so we ended up buying a short little boat, 16-foot boat, mm-hmm. and it was not in good shape. And we actually had a shop class at school where we were allowed to bring it in. We actually fixed it up, sandblasted, and painted the trailer with our equipment at school. Yep. Then we actually flipped it for like five hundred dollars more than what we bought it for. Oh, you're doing your little flip flop. And thing. then we we bought a different boat that costs about the same price as the one before we fixed it up. And then with our extra money that we made flipping that boat, we each bought a bow fishing boat. Oh, cool. So that's how we made that happen. Sure. Yep. yep. Sure. We had a, an eighteen sixty boat and wobbly and 
you know, it's not nothing special, but it gets the job yep. done. Just your standard Fleet Farm halogen lights on there? Yep. For, yep. 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 And uh, I remember we were so proud of that boat. We painted it up. We we put rope lights in it to dress it up. We were getting the, you know, buying the, <laughs> you know how it is, buying yeah. all that stuff for the first time, making it truly your own. Right. That's, that's exciting. It's a big thing. You bet it is. Yep. Yeah. And I remember the first time, <laughs> this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is bad. The first time we went out, we went right in the Oplain Park. That's where we launched. Yep. Mm-hmm. We undid the straps and everything, and, you know, we're just high-fiving, you know, sun setting. It's just beautiful. Oh, yeah. And we're thinking, you know what? We're going to go out and bowfish in our own boat with our own bows. I mean, we're doing it all by ourselves. Heck, this, yeah, man. This that's is, a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, was a, it was a big deal. Yeah. We were excited. I remember I barely slept the night before because I know we were going out the next day. <laughs> and... So we pull down to the landing, and, you know, there's a, a incline, you know, where you yep. dump the boat in, and mm-hmm. we take the straps off, and I hopped out, and my buddy Kyle, he's backing the, the boat down, and I don't know, I was looking at the water, taking a picture or something, and all of a sudden, I heard the noise of the rollers. Oh, no. On the trailer. Uh-oh. And we were a good 10 yards away from the water. You got rollers on there. And the motor's down. Okay, it's not up. <laughs> it's either, you know, it's the old 40-horse Honda. And it was either down or up. There was no, you know, you didn't trim it or yeah, nothing. It, right. And it was down. Oh, no. Mm-mm. The boat rolled off the trailer. Oh, and boy. And cling to the thing, ping, pong, poom, poom. Like five or six yards. Oh, not good. Down the ramp. Yep, the the motor was just flexing on the back. And, and oh, I mean, boy. we went from ultimate high to ultimate <laughs> low. I mean, yeah. we felt, we're like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Your boat is dry docked on the land. Exactly. Yeah. So somehow we we were we managed to lift the motor up and we just pushed it yeah. into the water. Sure. You know, it's a light John boat. We yeah. didn't have a lot of stuff in there, so we got it in there and we you know we're like, oh my gosh, crisis averted. Thank the Lord that <laughs> you know this is gonna be okay. <laughs> so we start everything up. We're having a great night and there's you know the old plane is it's okay for bow fishing. It's nothing special. I think we right. we shot like four or five fish in an hour maybe and. They were all pretty small, and I was on the trolling motor, and I remember thinking to myself, man, this is getting really hard to propel us. It's like the trolling motor was losing power, even though we charged it up the night mm-hmm. before. So that's just what we thought. We're like, oh, man, this battery you know, must not be very good. We're losing power pretty quick here. So we turn around in the back. I don't know if I was going to put a fish in a barrel or what, and here the back part of our boat had eight or ten inches of water in it. Oh, you're taking on water. And we were like four inches from the back of the boat. From water from, coming over top? Yes. Oh, boy. Yes. <laughs> so we some we got the water out of there. I think we just used it. We had a little bucket in there that we scooped it all out of there. And no then bilge we, bump. No. God, no, bilge no that's, bump. That, that was so far. No. That would have been nice. a luxury if we had nice. that. And I remember we, like, shoved. What? Did, and there was holes in the back. Of course, from when it ricocheted down oh, the landing. Yeah, that's when yeah. it happened. Yep. There were holes and stuff. And... We kind of looked at each other and we're like, well, you know, we should probably pack it up, you know, and both of us were like, I can't do it. We got to, we got to <laughs> fix it somehow. I remember I had, we brought snacks and whatever, and I had a pack of gum in there. And no, this, you didn't. No, I know. It sounds, no, you didn't. it sounds so cliche, but I know we did it for one. <laughs> we chewed a bunch of gum and from one of them, I shoved a stick through a chewed piece of bubble gum into that hole and it actually worked pretty darn well wow and we we like shoved grass and stuff and then every five minutes or so one of us went back there and we would just check we would take more water out jb bubblegum baby yeah (laughs) and that kept us afloat so we you know we would we would we fish for two or three hours more sure that that whole senior year once we got everything figured out and we learned to you know not unlatch the boat from the trailer until you're right by the water so it doesn't Mm -hmm. bounce down the landing you know we started going out a lot. We'd go out two, three times a week. You know, senior year of high school, well, you didn't have many classes that last semester. You know, sometimes you're sure, all we're right. all good to go yep. for for uh, college. And mm-hmm. there was times when we would even say like a Tuesday night, we'd go down to Castle Rock or Petenwell or Winnicott County, wherever we would go bullfish. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we'd lose track of time, and we'd be rolling into the school parking lot the next morning <laughs> just in time to get to our first hour class Ooh, with the boat in the back of the truck. We're covered. We got our freaking carp stuff on full of slime and nice. carp, carp juice. But they love that. Oh, yeah. But I tell you what, 
I wouldn't have traded that for that was a such that was so much fun and so much fun. You you hear it so often about being bitten by the bow fishing bug or the oh, bow fishing addiction. And yep. stuff. it is true. It it truly is true. You you know how many stories have you heard where a guy goes out with a buddy, and just shortly weeks after he's looking for John boats for sale mm-hmm. for to get his own rig. Right. So it's definitely a bow fishing bug that that is out there that you get hooked onto. Right. And the cool thing about bow fishing is once you think about it, it's not really that expensive of a no. sport to get into right nope. away. Now, granted, <laughs> down the road you get into right. boats and a lot of other stuff. It right. can get very expensive, but it doesn't need. It's not very expensive sport to get into. Mm-hmm. I, just to reference to that, I think we paid and we split it twelve hundred dollars for our crappy little John boat yeah, to start absolutely. out with. You know, and it was nothing special, but it floated and we could mount a trolling motor on it. So <laughs> yep, that's that's all we needed. And that right there was a ton of bow fishing memories for you. And oh, Kyle. I. I could tell stories for hours. Absolutely. I mean, and that was, you know, two, three years of of using that. We still have it, and we still use it. So Absolutely. Yeah, it's, you know, you blast. don't need a, a high-priced bow to start out with. You can just go to a garage sale or a pawn shop and pick up a, any type of recurve compound bow. Oh, yeah, um, for sure. You know, because the draw weights aren't huge for bow fishing. You don't need to have a bow that shoots, you know, 60, 70 pounds. Nope. The general, you know, bow rate uh, ranges from, you know, what, 20 to 45 yeah, pounds? Say, they kind 20 of to 40-ish. Right right. Depending on the species that you're shooting. Right, right. So you don't need a real expensive, fancy bow mm-hmm. um, to get started, you know, so. And I know, like, for yourself, and you know me, I love to hunt. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely love, I mean, I can obsess myself during the October, November months right. with hunting, and right. I love the prep to it and everything. And same with fishing. I love doing that. Bow fishing falls right in line. Absolutely. I mean, it's just, it's the same at least I know I take it just as serious as I take anything else. It, there's so much prep work and stuff that you can do for fun and think about mm-hmm. and just get yourself prepared. And it's an absolute blast once you're out on the water. I mean, it's right. one of the funnest things I've ever done. Yep. And one thing that, you know, here in Wisconsin, like I said, we've got a foot of ice on all the lakes I and stuff know. around here. Yeah. So we're always really looking forward to that time when some of the rivers start to open up into some of the, the, the lakes, you know, like Pete and Well and stuff like that and Castle Rock when they start to open up. And it's something that I myself, I know you and a bunch of other people, truly look forward to that March spring oh, runoff. Absolutely. And all that stuff to start opening up yep. for us here and to get back out in the water and, and start targeting those rough fish. So, yeah. you know, bow fishing is not not expensive to get into. Right. You know, right. Like I, I I just, uh, yeah, two high school kids. Absolutely. You know, I just like to tell people that and say, oh, you know, sometimes all you see all these big boats and these, these bows and everything. Well, yeah, maybe you can get there down the line. Right. But to start out, you, so do, don't, you, you know, do not need that. Right. I mean, a canoe, walking the banks. Exactly, walking the banks. Yeah, you yeah. don't even need a boat sometimes. Right. So yeah. that's my story. How about yourself? Oh, boy. <laughs> I got to think back here. Oh, yeah, back in the, yeah, that's that's back in the 50s and 60s. Oh, I, I know my hair is gray, but not that gray, <laughs> D. Schmitty. <laughs> Actually, um... It was probably the late 80s okay. when I started to, you know, bowfish. But it wasn't a huge, you know, year-round springtime thing. Sure. For me, bowfishing, you know, I would take my dad's smoker craft, you know, he had a 16-foot smoker craft fishing boat. Sure. And I would go on the old plane flow out here and go walleye fishing. Mm-hmm. And, of course, I'd be sitting there walleye fishing in the main channel and stuff like that, and I would see these carp splashing in the bays. They were spawning and yep. stuff. yep. When I saw that, I would just, you know, the next time I went out there, I would I grabbed my, my AMS gear and my bows and stuff and went out there, and I threw an old garbage, you know, bin in my dad's smoker craft yep. boat. Yep, uh, He had red carpet in there. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, that, maybe that's a good thing, because then was, the, the blood was, would blend in. It was red, but it was carpet yet, you know. Oh, he had sure. carpet in his right, boat. Right, But I would go out there, and I would shoot the fish when, when they were spawning, and when the spawn was done, I mm-hmm. just wrapped it up, and that was it. Sure. And you were not working for AMS at this, no, at this no, time, right? No, no, right. no. I was not working at AMS. I was working at a car dealership. Um, and eventually, you know, I, I did get my foot in the door here at AMS Bowfishing uh, years ago. Cindy Brown, the owner of AMS Bowfishing, and, and my wife were good friends. Sure. Uh, my wife actually stood up in Cindy's wedding. Hmm. Um, so they became, they were really good friends through high school and, you know, after high school and stuff like that. Those connections are just crazy. How they they are. bring you here, you They know? really are. And I knew Jeff. Um, I was in the same year, graduating year as he was, except we were in different schools. I was mm-hmm. in Stratford. He was at Abbotsford. And um, so I knew Jeff a little bit. 
But then, like I said, um, I got my foot in the door here at Amos Bow Fishing, and and you know, the bug was definitely there. Sure. Um, I actually bought a 16 foot Grumman mm-hmm. boat. Okay, I'm up, man. No motor. I had a foot controlled. I think like a 60 pound thrust trolling motor sure. in front of it. No motor. Yep. It did have a deck with some halogen lights on it. Okay. And um, I would go out and right away I would just start trolling because I had no motor. Right. Right. Um, and I would shoot fish with it and had a blast. Um, you get two people on there and it would like lean mm-hmm. to where the water was almost coming over the front of the boat. It was, <laughs> oh my gosh. It wasn't very sturdy. Yep. Uh, I ended up selling that and then I got an 1860 Tracker Grizzly. Oh. I cool. bought it from very a guy cool. over in Michigan. I went up there and picked it up. Brought that back and I love that boat. It was nice and wide. We built a nice uh, aluminum deck on it sure. and halogen lights that had my. Bought a five thousand watt old generator that I stuffed in the back. Oh of there. my gosh! Wow. And I have three guys to lift that thing in the boat. Yeah, sure, sure. Oh boy. And um, so that's what I did a lot of fishing out of. Uh, shot in our first tournaments with that boat. Oh, very cool. It was called Team Backstabbing. Oh, okay. Yep, and shot in some tournaments. And actually, at the tournaments is where I met a lot of bow fishing friends. Oh yeah, there's a great place to interact. Absolutely, the the tournaments, the, the WBA tournaments, are the ones we would go to here in Wisconsin, and uh, I would see all the different styles of boats. You know, mm-hmm. the different styles. You know, fans, um, trollers, kickers really weren't a big thing back then, but it was mainly fans and trolling motors. Yeah. Um, but that's where I learned a lot about bow fishing and like i said i met a lot of great people in the sport there and the cool thing is is everybody was willing to help out as far as what you needed in your boat for this or that uh light preferences you know generators and stuff like that sure um granted they wouldn't give you their fishing spots right yep that's the only thing they wouldn't tell you (laughs) yep yep but i i wouldn't want anyways i like to find my fish on myself but if you want to learn a lot you know, join join a bow fishing club right. in your area. Almost right. all the states have some type of a bow fishing association. Mm-hmm. Um, become a member of the BAA. You know, they they are striving out there to help protect our rights. Um, they're fighting on a lot of issues. Uh, they have a lot of the uh, the the records are kept through the BAA if you become a member. And um, so join these clubs out there that yeah, are that absolutely. are there. You know, here in Wisconsin we have the Wisconsin Bow Fishing Association. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and just get your foot in the door. Like I said, you don't need a lot of money to get started right away. Like Derek said, he started out in just a small little, you know, 16 foot, $1,200 yeah. boat and they built it up themselves and yep. sold it and got a bigger one. Kind of like how I did it myself. Right. Um, so you don't need to. And then from there, you know, things start rolling. You get teammates, you kind of get guys that you, you kind of shoot with a lot and, and you put more and more time into it and right. stuff like that. So it, it can be a, a truly enjoyable road that you get into as far as bow fishing goes For sure you know and then once you start shooting in those in those local you know statewide tournaments um, then then you a couple roads down and you start to venture to not a state tournament sure yeah. uh, maybe you do one a year maybe you, the next year you do a couple more and it just keeps growing and growing on from there but um yeah bow fishing is is addicting oh for sure it's heart pounding oh it's yeah, kind of like futuristic. Yeah. If you think about it, it's pretty Pe- cool. People who don't know about bow fishing, you tell them about it and they're like, "What?" Right. You're shooting fish with a bow and arrow that can exactly. weigh up to, you know, these <laughs> yeah. ungodly amounts. Absolutely. And another thing just to go off what you're saying as far as meeting people, something that I love to do. I like it just as much as going out and shooting fish myself. Mm-hmm. You have a buddy that comes up to you and says, "Oh my gosh, you, you guys bow fish? You guys have a boat and everything?" He said, you know, he goes, I'd love to come along sometime. Yep. And you take them out. They shoot fish. They have a blast. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon, they're buying their own boat or their own bow. And they're starting to get into the sport. Absolutely. And just seeing that yourself, you did that. You spread, you know, you introduced the sport to him. And now hopefully he's going to go do it. You know, it's just like a wildfire effect. Absolutely. As far as introducing people to the sport, that is such a satisfying feeling, at least for myself. I know it is. Yes, it is. You know, getting back to... Uh, a funny little thing here with uh, my very first Grumman boat that I had. Like I said, I had no motor. Mm-hmm. It required a, a long shaft motor, outboard motor. Okay. All right. My brother had a short shaft, so I would take that uh, out, go and steal his short shaft motor oh, once in a while, boy. throw it on my boat, but I couldn't plane because it just sure. it p- start 
decapitating right away. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be going anywhere. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of funny how I would just kind of buzz around and not really go anywhere. Sure, right. <laughs> with that goofy right. thing. Right. So it was kind of funny. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, oh my gosh, we're already at the 25 minute mark. I tell you what, time goes fast wow. when you're when you're telling stories wow. like that. You know, and there's so much because oh, I know. The cool thing about bow fishing is nothing is right. Yeah. Nothing yeah. is right. Yeah, I hear you. You go to a tournament, and you see you'll see a hundred different variations of boats and what's inside of them. Right. Lighting. You know, that's a whole other topic oh. on its own. You know, HPS, metal halide, halogen, LEDs now. Mm-hmm. But nothing is right. What you prefer. Yeah, it's all personal and what you preference. Like, yeah. uh, what you want to spend your money on. You know, so nothing is right. Whatever you have out there is what you have, and that's what you are enjoying, and that's what you get out of the sport of bow fishing. Sure, sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I think that's a... I think people now have a little bit of background knowledge as far as how we got started. And maybe mm -hmm. if someone's listening and they want to get started, maybe they can have a little bit of a, you know, we laid the path work for them a little bit. Sure. They could follow that. So, yep. Absolutely. absolutely. I think something that we should start doing with these podcasts, maybe okay. at the end, you know, wherever we want to throw in there, I think mm -hmm. we should highlight a product that AMS carries, an AMS product that we assembled here at AMS. Sure. And I think that this podcast... The highlighted product could be the 610 Retriever TNT. Oh, the TNT. Yep, yep. I love the TNT, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Would you like to tell everyone a little bit extra about it? Yeah. You know, the 610 TNT is based off of the Retriever Pro, except we have a higher gear ratio of 4.3 to 1. What does that mean when you tell it to somebody? Right. Yep. Oh, 4.3 to 1. Cool. Yeah. Know? Numbers. What, is, what does that... What, what? Basically, what that means is the higher gear ratio... So... You've got the TNT retriever. When you do one full revolution of the handle, mm -hmm. all right, it pulls in 27 inches of line. Yep. Okay. You take the retriever pro, you turn one full revolution of the handle, it pulls in 17 inches of sure. line. So it's a lot faster. And it, you can tell the difference, absolutely. No doubt you can tell the difference. I remember the first time that when I was actually shooting the 610 TNT, I shot onto the water and I just cranked my arrow back. Not even looking at my arrow, yep. and it came flying up onto the deck. Like, mm -hmm. I wasn't used to that. Right. <laughs> it came flying back so fast. Right. You know, it's got the, the built-in quiver, uh, brass gears and so stuff nice. like that. It's, it's really nice, real um, 35 yards of 350-pound spectra line. Yep. Um, so our product highlight this episode two is the 610 TNT Retriever. Yeah. Great reel to have on your bow fishing bow hats for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. If you want to check them out, check them out at amsbowfishing.com. Yep. But I think we're almost getting ready to wrap it up here for episode two. We're almost getting here on 30 minutes. Wow. That, uh, <laughs> I feel like we've been best. recording for five minutes. Yeah, no kidding. That's crazy. No kidding. That so, is, that's awesome. We'll see what we're going to come up with for our episode three. But as of right now, we hope you enjoyed the AMS bow fishing buzz. Mm-hmm episode two here on how we got started in bow fishing if you have any questions or anything give us some feedback on our facebook page uh we will be doing a question and answer episode here also coming up sure. um we're gonna be getting some special guests on here as well but from all of us here at ams bow fishing and remember ams stands for awesome matthew schillinger no it does not <laughs> He's a wing nut. It stands for all metal stamping. <laughs> I actually have to ask all the listeners this because I had someone message us after our last podcast. And he said, oh, I didn't realize that there was two people talking in that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my good buddy, Reese. Oh, Reese, Reese said Bogan, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Reese, Reese is a good bull fisherman up here. He's, <laughs> he's a good guy. And he, yeah, he said, oh, I thought it was just, I just thought it was Matt talking. <laughs> So apparently he thinks we sound alike. Maybe you guys let us know if we sound alike or not. I don't think we do. Maybe a little bit. Nothing nothing too similar. I have heard references where they think that you're my son. I know. We get that all the time. We do get I that I think when time. we're standing at shows right next to each other and we're yep. being doofuses out yep. there, they're like, oh, father, son. But father and son, you, you're a big LeBron fan, and I'm a big Jordan fan, and that's a total different story on its own. But Yeah, well, LeBron's a goat. No, so. he's not. <laughs> we could have a whole new around. podcast about that. <laughs> I think next podcast, episode three, we should talk about tournaments. I think that's a great idea. I think we should talk about bow fishing tournaments. Absolutely. There's a lot to cover there. Cool. Let's Lots do of that. content. All right. Sounds like Let's a plan. Sounds like a plan. So from all of us at AMS Bow Fishing and the Bow Fishing Buzz, we will catch you 
on episode two, three, four, five. We're going to make a bunch of them. We are. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. So keep listening. And remember, aim low, think big. See you guys. <laughs>